Hi guys, this is a quick voiceover for the rushes on the proposed movie Quest for the Pink and White Terraces covering the expedition that uh, Bill and I made to, to the lake on the 12th of February 2016. We're here in Harvey James' boat taking GPS coordinates, uh, passing by Pink Terrace Bay, uh, one of our future third dive sites looking at some of the wonderful sights and here past the north point of Pink Terrace Bay, our number two dive site where we found something interesting and looking forward to our first dive location on the side of the White Terrace coming up over the uh, lake and now closing on the end of Titarata Point. This is Harvey James' fine little fire and boat which he kindly lent us and the point, Titarata Point, under which I believe at least part of the White Terrace lies. We're getting into our gear here. There's a good shot of Bill contemplating. And we're doing some preliminary finning uh, to check out the water quality and get ourselves oriented. Uh, we're getting out quite far as we anticipated on the underwater spur. Uh, this is the first evidence of a fish kill that we found almost immediately. There were cockabullies lying in the three dive locations. Uh, now we're getting ourselves oriented underwater with the GoPro. You can see the visibility is not too bad. It's four or five meters. Luxuriant weed growth which makes finding terraces a little bit difficult. <laughs> um, but very pleasant and warm water temperatures as we um, steadily got down towards the thermocline. So this is uh, movie footage shot on our second uh, location, the north point of Pink Terrace Bay. For we um, we found a wide black terracey looking shelf off White uh, White Terrace location, uh, but uh, that's still awaiting identification. And unfortunately, we took no footage of it, either video or photography. Uh, this is uh, videography of closing on. A very interesting second dive off the uh, north point on Pink Terrace Bay, Teotu Pukurangi, Pukurangi Bay, and we're getting down probably to 40 or 50 feet uh, on our way down to look for the edge of the shelf on the spur. And uh, one of the sites uh, under the two bay hypothesis of um, the Otuku Pukurangi Spring, the uh, water source for the Pink Terrace. Where um, we passed a number of vents on the floor of the lake, as Cornel Duron said, there are thousands there, uh, and uh, we came across several big man sized ones uh, uh, down around uh, 30 to 40 feet, and indeed, there at all levels in the lake, there are lots of uh, uh, bubble plumes, heat plumes coming up from the surface, uh, coming up to the surface um, at all depths. Uh, not just at um, uh, the shallow depths, uh, as we'll see later, but also down here uh, through many of the, uh, the vents. And, and, and here's a typical, quite a deep one that seemed to go down to the center of the earth uh, and uh, then led on to uh, an even bigger one that we'll come to shortly that was in precisely the right location under the two bay hypothesis to be the right uh, coordinates and uh, elevation to be the um, the spring for the pink terrace under the two bay hypothesis uh, and this is just coming over the uh, uh, the horizon shortly there it is there it's a very large uh, vent uh, a hydrothermal vent according to Cornell uh, you could it could easily fit the two of us in with plenty of room to spare. I would say it's five to ten meters across. Very hard to um, estimate distances uh, under the water, um, especially as the visibility is going down. And we're coming back into that spring in just a moment. And here it is here. It's quite deep, I would say five to ten meters deep um, it's a rocky uh, surrounded by rocks of course a rocky shelf um, and uh, there is a gas plume coming out of it um, although we are here 
I think pretty close to the thermocline. Uh, visibility was also quite poor and uh, you can see down into uh, the uh, uh, base of the vent where there is um, a fissure leading down to goodness knows where. Here where you can see a, cook a, a live cockabully uh, uh, coming across the bottom of the screen briefly and now we're heading back up uh, out of the vent and uh, along the edge of a rock shelf <clears throat> excuse me not a heavy mud overlay at this level there's lots of bare rock which surprised us and I guess this is due to underwater erosion and the currents that Cornell has commented on uh, here there's a little bit of mud um, uh, uh, on the floor as there is in the shallows and as you can see um, uh, gas plumes uh, everywhere we go and the bottom at this depth which is um, I guess down 50 or even 60 feet coming back up to, to 40 feet or so uh, there are myriad vents everywhere on the uh, on the base of the lake we're coming over a rock shelf here on the along the edge of the spur reaching roughly south from the northern point of Teotuku Porangi Bay uh, where I thought that um, the pink terrace might be located uh, we didn't find the terrace um, but that spring by golly it proved to be in exactly the right place uh, looking uh, northeast um, and at the right elevation for the pink terrace spring so I am um, I've got my hand up partially on that one but it needs more evidence uh, to be sure but it certainly was an encouraging find here we're coming a little shallower and uh, around the edge of that uh, spur leading down into uh, the deep blue into the center of the lake nearly what nearly 120 meters I think down there um, water temperature here is uh, quite low uh, as we're close to the thermocline at this point one can see lots of vents um, right across the bottom of the lake here this is a, a rocky outcrop we of course were looking for terrorists sorry did I say terrorists slip of the tongue um, we were looking for white or pink terraces and uh, we're not really attuned to looking for black rock shelves which were rough versus the alabaster smooth terrace material we expected we might uh, find being I think the first persons to dive on these sites I think ever which surprised me uh, until I found out the uh, the water is quite toxic with um, mercury and arsenic contamination um, and uh, it's not a terribly healthy place to dive here you can see some um, wave terraces uh, from the time when the lake was filling I would imagine uh, and uh, that indicates that when when the lake level got to this point it stayed there for some time and wore away the rocks in this area um, lots of um, gas plumes coming up as you can see and then down from the right here it's fading down into the blue lots of flat rocky shelving here we'll come on and show uh, some of the the sheets of rock that uh, we um, uh, had a look at uh, at the boat but uh, here quite a clean bottom um, we're down below much of the weed growth area because the light intensity is getting so low uh, and a very interesting place a few cockabullies as you can see we saw no other marine life except cockabullies and um, uh, conical shaped sea uh, snails which were quite uh, quite prevalent uh, no eels, no kura, um, no sponges, no trout although we saw trout jumping on the surface across the lake here we are planing up at the end of that dive heading back uh, thankfully to the surface uh, after a fairly um, a fairly long peregrination one can see again uh, lots of vents on the bottom and fissures um, the mud cover here is, is persisting whereas below it seems to have washed down into the um, into the rift as GNS uh, has recently assessed I think up to 50 meters of mud cover down on the bottom of that rift that we looked over to 
But this is the perhaps the, the getting towards the end of our second and most interesting dive, uh, wherein uh, we may we found a very interesting hydrothermal vent um, that we will name, as we seem to be the first pe people to see it, and therefore have naming rights, as GNS has done on several of the larger craters around the lake. We got back to the surface and had a look at uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the materials we found down there uh, and took photos. These are, I was informed, uh, ferric, ferrous oxides uh, which steadily lost color. That's probably manganese and in the top right there's a small lava projectile with zeolite and gypsum inclusions and on the left this is some sinter. The gray area at the bottom I'm assured is sinter. Um, uh, in, in this rock which came off the shelf um, off the south point of Pink Terrace Bay just to our left in this scene. This is the north point of Pink Terrace Bay just showing briefly there and uh, this is some video sh shot in the shallows around uh, the northern point of Teotuku Porangi Bay uh, showing the uh, myriad uh, gas plumes everywhere um, and a lot of uh, hot water coming out along the shore uh, th wherever we went. A lot of dead cocker bullies littered along the bottom on top of weeds, under weeds. Many of them fell to pieces because there seemed to be no predators. Uh, this is some fauna, uh, some flora on the bottom of the lake, different coloured, uh, they look like sea ferns I would say. Uh, again lots of plumes uh, coming up. Uh, lots of bubbles uh, and lots of uh, hot water plumes that we did look out for, not wishing to be scalded. This is the um, and more close-ups of the vent, the big hydrothermal thermal vent we found. It didn't photograph very well, uh, no matter what we tried, but you can get an idea of the size of the thing. These stills are bubbles, of course, two regulators pumping out bubbles filled up the, the cavity of the basin. Uh, these are the walls of the basin and there is a deep vent that stretches down goodness knows how far. Uh, another shot outside that hydrothermal vent and along the floor above it on the way back. Um, and uh, now moving on to some of the fantastic scenery around uh, Rotomahana. Also the lake is three meters down as you can see along that shoreline. And uh, here we're getting towards the end of our um, peregrination. A quick stop off at this uh, brilliant uh, geothermal feature, uh, the Angel's Wings, I believe it's called, uh, and uh, with uh, some justification. And we're heading back uh, regretfully after several hours on the lake to uh, Waimangu uh, and uh, returning the boat. We were disappointed that we hadn't seen any pink or white terraces, but until we analyzed all the materials, we really didn't realize. Um, what uh, we had located and what we might have done had we um, uh, had we had longer to go there. Uh, again, this uh, luxuriant weed growth all, all over the bottom of the lake means that any terraces, uh, especially the white one, lying shallowly are going to be very, very difficult to see visually uh, through the weed cover as time goes on. Um, their visibility varied on the lake. It's quite turbid, uh, as you would imagine, but I think we did pick the best time of the year to go. Uh, so in summary, uh, we found a black terrace, uh, a, a black shelf, a, a terracy looking shelf off Titarata Point, down around uh, 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 many meters, quite deep below the thermocline. We found a large hydrothermal vent right where I expected to find the top of the pink terrace and we found center that is terrace like material uh, but not not the terrace itself of course but we found center on the bottom of the lake and brought that back as physical evidence along with a lot of photographic and video evidence hopefully we can make a short film out of this um, which I will do once I finish the book but for the time being um, that was our first dive on uh, Lake Rotomahana uh, and it certainly provided uh, a wealth of information uh, but again a somewhat spooky and gloomy lake um, with reasonably toxic water and uh, all those dead fish around bothered me so I'm not sure that I'll be returning. I hope you enjoyed our, our effort. Bye bye now. <laughs>